Greetings and welcome. We've been talking about vector and parametric equations. Uh, last night's quest was on page 524. And specifically, here's question 15 for us to look at. It says, write a vector equation of the line that passes through the point P and is parallel to vector A. Then write parametric equations of the line. So um, the vector equation of a line uh, looks something like this, where I've got the vector that passes through uh, two points. One of those points is going to be generic for us in the terms of x and y. Uh, and that's equal to some scalar t. This scalar usually in modeling cases ends up representing time multiplied by vector a. All right. So in our situation, um, I'll call the point x comma y. I'll refer that as my x2, y2. Uh, the point here will be my x1, y1. And then the coordinates of vector a will be a1, a2. So we just have to plug this in, uh, and I'll have the vector equation uh, x minus 1 comma y minus 5 is equal to t is still t. It's an uh, undefined parameter for us right now where it can represent any time, really. Uh, and multiplied by vector negative 7 comma 2. So this is the vector equation of the line, but then they also ask us to write the parametric equation of the line. And I technically can do this if I distribute uh, t to both of these and then set this component equal to t times negative 7 and this uh, coordinate equal to t times 2. Uh, I could actually solve that again on my own, or I can actually use the little the formulas that we were given. x is equal to x1 plus t times a1 and y is equal to y1 plus t times a2. So here's kind of the, the general parametric equations of a line that pass through a point and are parallel to a vector. So once again, I'm just going to plug in uh, what I've got. So I'll have x equals 1 plus t times negative 7. So I guess I could write that as minus 7t. And I'll have y equals 5. Uh, plus 2t. And these would be the parametric equations. Um, this one represents the motion, horizontally speaking, of the point or the particle or the plane, whatever I'd be talking about. And this is the vertical coordinate or location of whatever object I'm talking about at given time t. So it kind of breaks it down into horizontal and vertical movement. Uh, and you can actually then end up analyzing those separately. So t is called a parameter, uh, and that's why these are called parametric equations. Um, and instead of just having the trajectory of an object uh, over time, I actually know where the object is at a given time on that basis. So let's see, here's question 21, different directions. It says, write parametric equations of the line with the given equation. So here's the equation of a line. It's in standard form. If you want you could uh, subtract 9x from both sides if you're a fan of sloppy intercept form. So y equals negative 9x plus 1. Um, but this is still just a path. It's a, an, an area that our object would move through, but we don't necessarily know where it is at what point. If I want to write vector, or sorry, parametric equations, I'm going to have to introduce the variable t and break it down into an x and a y motion. Now, oftentimes what we would do in this case, if I just want to get into a parametric equation, we'll let x equal t is kind of the main idea. Technically, I could say, oh, let x equal 1 half t, or let x equal 10 t, or t minus 1. Uh, so that'll be my first equation. And then I'll end up plugging this in and get a y equation. Uh, also in terms of t. So I'll have y equals negative 9t plus 1. And here are my two par par <coughs> parametric equations. I've got announcements going on in the background, but that's okay. $7 for adults, $4 for students and seniors. And if you're paying by check, make the check payable to TDHS. 
Vermont Regional One Act Festival is tomorrow, March 8th, here at the high school. Twin Valley will play host to the Regional One Act Drum Festival. There will be three performance blocks at 12.45, 4 p.m. and 8 p.m. Each block is $5 for adults, $4 for students and seniors. Twin Valley's performance is in the 4 p.m. block. If you're in the area and you could do so, please come out and support student theater. As the Drama Student Center into their competition on Saturday, they also wish to extend the greatest good luck to the boys basketball team in the state finals. Governor's Institute of Vermont, students entering 10th, 11th, and 12th grades are eligible to attend one of nine institutes in subjects ranging from engineering and mathematics to the arts and youth and activism. Come to student services for more information. Deadline to apply for that is March 15th. MedQuest, today, or actually tomorrow is the deadline for MedQuest applications. This is a six-day program that exposes students to a wide range of health career opportunities. Please see Ms. Bertard if you want information on this exciting program, and you would need to get your application in today, I'm sorry, not tomorrow. College Quest is also available for this summer. This is a six-week summer residential program for 11th grade students interested in health care. Application deadline for College Quest is March 27th. American Legion Auxiliary Green Mountain Girls' Day will be held at Vermont Tech College from June 15th to the 19th. The Girls' Day delegates and the yeah. working together as self governing citizens learning to participate in the functioning of Vermont's local and state government. Wow. This exciting opportunity is open to any female in the 11th grade. All fees are paid for by the local American Legion Auxiliary Group. If you're interested in attending, please see this tip. There's also information for the Law and Order Cadet Training Program and for the YWCA camp here. This is the office if you'd like information about. Memorial Hall Center for the Arts is reopening the Dover Theater and could use volunteers for help with concessions and handing out programs. This weekend's films are Frozen and Philomena. Showings for Frozen are Saturday, March 8th at 3 p.m. and Sunday, March 9th at 2 p.m. Showings for Philomena are Saturday and Sunday at 7.30 p.m. Please see Emily Girardi for more information. Seniors, remember to check the binder and look at applications for scholarships. Deadlines are fast approaching on many of them. Prom committee will meet Monday in Mr. Taylor's room. National Honor Society meeting will be next Friday during lunch in the music room. Winter Sports Awards Night. Winter Sports Awards will be held next Wednesday, March 12th, 6 30 in the cafeteria. All boys and girls basketball players should attend and bring all uniforms, wash, fold, and in their bags. Fresh room is open from 2 45 to 4 30 today. That is good to see you. Everybody, please have a fabulous Friday. So, those were the morning announcements. Uh, so I've outlined uh, a strategy to, if I have parametric equations and I just want to represent the path of the object and I'm not interested in the time, uh, this is the general outline for what you do. You could solve both equations for t, substitute them into each other, and then rewrite in the desired form. So you can see I took both of my parametric equations. I, I got t by itself. And if both of these are actually equal to t, then I could plug them in. Uh, 4t in either case. So I ended up getting x plus 11 all over 4 is equal to y minus 3. I chose to cross multiply here. You could really solve any number of ways. But uh, my eventual goal was to get y by itself because that's y equals mx plus b. And that ends up giving me um, my slope intercept form where my slope and my y intercept are then apparent to us. Uh, so so this equation represents the path of the object. These equations represented the location of the object at a particular time on, on this path. Okay. So uh, if you were really interested in graphing this, you could realize that the slope was 1 fourth and that the y-intercept was 23 fourths, something like that. Right. So uh, thanks for watching, friends. Have a great day.